Hi developers, I'm Hossam Dillai, Microsoft MVP. In this video, we'll learn how to validate user input like emails in Xamarin Forms applications. Here I do have the demo that we want to build today. So the user enters an email in this entry, then click the validate button and a message will be shown to tell the user if that's a valid email or not. So let's learn how to create this application in Xamarin Forms. And when creating the application, we'll go through two methods. The first one is the simplest one. So we'll add just an, an entry and we'll do the validation when clicking on the button. So we'll use regex expressions to verify if the email matches a valid email form. Then we'll go to the second step where we'll use behaviors to validate that email. Here from Visual Studio, I'll go and create a new empty project by going to File, New Project, then select Cross Platform, Cross Platform App, and give our application a name. Choose the Portable Class Library, hit OK. Here I'll go to the main page and create an entry to the, for, so that the user can enter his keyword and a button to validate the email. Let's put those elements inside the stack layout and let's add our first entry. Let's add a placeholder to indicate that this entry is for typing uh, an email. So let's say sample at email.com. Then let's add a label to display the errors if there is um, an, er uh, an error in validating the email. So let's say label and let's give it a name so that we can access it. So let's say name. This is going to be the error label. Then we'll add a button. That button will have text displaying validate email. Once clicked on that button, we'll go and create an event handler right here and the code behind. And this event handler will do the validation for our uh, email. So first of all, let's um, get the email typed by the user. So let's say email equal. And to get that email, I need to access this entry right here. So I need to give it a name. Let's call it email entry. Now I can access my email entry dot text to get the email typed by the user. Then from here, I can go and say if email contains the alt and if email also contains the at keyword after uh, the uh, or the point after the alt keyword and they can write all these uh, if else uh, syntax but we do have a greater option which is using regex expressions so let's see how that looks like here i do have this website email regex.com where from here you can get um, regex expression that validates an email here we do have all the syntaxes for different languages and here I'll pick the one specific for C Sharp. So I'll go and copy this one, copy it. So I'll go and create a variable for that email pattern. And let's paste that value right here. Here using ReSharper, I'll go and escape the pasted text like this one. Cool. Now the regex expression represents um, a condition. So I'll go and verify that condition using the regex object. Here it's inside the system dot uh, text dot regular expressions. And from here I can say if my regex expression is match and I'm verifying between the input so this means between my email value and the pattern, which is here my email pattern. So if that's the case, then I'll go and write uh, 
inside the error label dot text that the email is valid if that's not the case then we'll go and write inside the error label dot text that the, our email is not valid now let's run this for iOS for example so here I pick iOS project and then choose to run this on the simulator and hit run oops from here I do have the um, the entry at the top of the page under the stage under the status bar so I'll go and make it shown in the um, center of the screen by going to my stack layout and specify vertical options equal center so that we can get a better uh, user interface for our application let's try to type some email validate email and it's not it's telling me email is not valid because here uh, it wants the email to start with lower case validate email and now it tells me email is valid we can also try to remove the alt validate email and now it's telling me it's not valid cool so this is the power of using regex expressions because here it, it will create or it will um, set the form of the email it tells that an email should have characters then have alt then some characters then we do have a point and then we, we should have uh, some other characters now let's see another value for creating or for validating the user input which is this time using the behaviors for that I'll go and create a new page in my Xamarin Forms application, go to the PCL project, add a new item, select Xamarin Forms, then from here I select content page and I'll call it using behaviors. And from here I'll go and do the same for the main page. I'll reuse this stack layout. Paste it here, but here we don't need the error label or the uh, button to validate so instead we'll have an entry the user enters his email then inside this entry we'll go and use behaviors and the way to use behaviors is by going inside the the entry element and say right here entry dot behaviors and inside this entry you add your behavior so let's go and create the behavior for that i'll go to my pcl project and add another class and call it email validation behavior a behavior is a public class that inherits from behavior of and here it's a generic type so I specify the element in which my behavior lives in so here my behaviors will be inside an entry element so I specify here that it's inside an entry and a behavior should implement or should override the methods for doing unattached to entry and from here this method will be invoked when this behavior is added to our entry and from here um, I'll go and subscribe subscribe my entry dot text change it so in every time the text is changed inside that entry I'll go and invoke a method so let's create that method right here I'm using resharper which will create that method for me automatically and from here I'm subscribing to this event handler now we need to add another um, override method that we should implement with behaviors which is here override on detached On detaching from um, our entry bindable property on detaching from will be invoked when we um, when the user interface 
will not be shown to the user. This means when the entry will be um, deleted by the OS. So in that case, we need to unsubscribe to all the methods or to unsubscribe for all the event handlers that we subscribed inside the undetached tool. So I'll say, I'll go and say bindable dot text change it. And here I go and unsubscribe from my method bindable on text change it. Great. Now bindable on text change it will be invoked in each time the text is changed. Which text here is the text inside this entry, which is my email here. So let's get that email value and we can get it here through this uh, text change event args. Let's call it E for brevity. And here, let's say E dot, and here you can say, you can see that we can either get the old value or the um, new value. Here I'm interested in getting the new value for the entry. This is going to be my email. And now I'll go and validate that email. And again, I'll use the regular expression. So I'll go back to my previous code right here where I have added this code, copy it, then I reuse it right here, but I'll do some modifications. Here, uh, don't forget to add the namespace for the regular expressions. Then right here, if uh, the uh, email uh, is matching the email pattern or is matching re the regular expression then what we want to do here uh, I'll, I'm not gonna show an error label but instead of that I'll just go and uh, change the background color of my entry to be red for example to, to say this is uh, there is an error here how we can get that uh, entry this specific entry for the email. So from here, I can get it through this sender object. This is going to be the entry from coming from my user interface. How to do it? So let's say here, email entry equal sender. And because sender is of type object, so we need to cast it to an entry. Then from here, you can say email entry dot and I have uh, lots of options to choose from and simply I'll go and change the background color for that um, entry. Let's say equal and this is uh, for the case is matching. So it means my email is valid. So I will just um, use the transparent color. If that's not the case, it means there is an error in my typed email, then I'll change the background to be red. Cool. Now let's run this page. For that, let's go and change the starting page inside our uh, app.xaml.cs. Here, the starting page was the main page, but now I want the starting page to be my using behaviors page. Let's run this app. But before for running this app, we did miss it something important here, which is referencing the behavior. So the behaviors here is still empty. So we need to reference our uh, email validation behavior. Let's copy that and let's go here and add a namespace, XML namespace for behaviors. Let's call it behaviors. And here I go and say equal input validation. Actually, I don't need this right here. My behavior lives inside this namespace input validation. So I just need to add this one CLR namespace input behavior. Then from that, I can now access my behavior through that behaviors namespace. So I say behaviors and right here dot uh, email validation behavior. Now I have attached that behavior. So if we run again, let's type an email. 
you see that here it's validating the email in real time when I'm typing my email and here now it accepted that email if we go and remove some of the required conditions for validating the email you see it's immediately changing the background color to tell me oh this is not a valid email there is some other options for validating uh, an email and how to write the good code that validates your email so here if you go to this uh, msdn blog post right here you can see that you can do the validation email through attributes so as we do in uh, ispnet uh, mvc where you do have the uh, attributes in which you can add the error then you can do the same with xamarin forms and here it's specifying the error message inside um, an attribute for each of the uh, properties that i want to validate here it's validating against a name or also against a description and so on so if you want to learn how to implement that then i recommend you go through this article that will show you uh, step by step how to implement um, validation using uh, attributes so i hope this video was helpful for you and thank you